Tom here from Lauren Systems. This is in no way brought to you by Big B Coffee. I just like their coffee. Let's get that out of the way real quick. You know, full disclosure of things. This is also not sponsored by XCPNG. It is just an open source product we use, but I wanted to talk about it because there was a good forum post and this discussion comes up a lot. And I figured, hey, these are some good talking points that are just interesting to me and maybe interesting to you. And a lot has happened since I talked about XCPNG and how we use it for clients. And I still get these... I don't know how else to describe them, but people who work in technology who are very dismissive and say, Tom just plays with things and he's just some guy who likes open source. And, you know, that's not how the real business world works, Tom. You know, you just like to do content for YouTube and people like free things and et cetera, et cetera. I have slowly watched a lot of those people over the years uh, kind of go by the wayside who don't embrace some of the open source stuff. And I do choose to embrace it, but there's a lot of business use case and well, the XCPNG story is definitely one of those wide adoption of open source for a lot of really solid reasons. And that includes very much so in the enterprise space. And there's a forum post that starts this off that kind of got me really thinking about it again. Now, I've done my previous videos on this topic and I've compared it to VMware. And VMware is where XCPNG really competes. And people think um, all the time like, oh, I thought it was just some little home lab project and it's not really ready for the corporate space. The Zen server itself, the Zen hypervisor that this is all based on is a very mature product and has been deployed in a lot of places. So it is not by any means just some hobby project get over here to the XCPNG, it is actually based on the original how Citrix was doing things. Citrix proved not to be a good steward of that project and uh, their move and licensing changes that confused people and kind of caught people off guard. Well, that is a business risk. Technology is no longer just some tooling that companies use. It has become the lifeblood of how they operate. It's very integrated into large corporate processes. So when you have a company that makes a change, especially when the change doesn't add any value, such as raising prices. And this is where VMware went as well, which caused tons of controversy. VMware licensing hike is severely unattractive to partners, to say the least. This was last year when VMware is like, hey, these cores are going to cause problems uh, for the way we like to monetize this. Uh, so without providing any value, people thought, hey, we could buy these extra cores and be able to run things more efficiently. And VMware goes, absolutely, uh, you could, but we want to make more money and this would not make us more money. So let's just throw this monkey wrench at you called, here's your no value add, but we're going to add a lot more in fees. Um, and this actually was kind of timely because I thought this was interesting too. Uh, Wendell Level 1 Tech uh, did a great job talking about the new Epic processors and a calculation that not everybody really stops to think about. It is the core cost of things like SQL. So now when you're buying a processor with the most cores, that seems like a good idea maybe when you're building your home lab. But if you have things that are very core dependent licensing, um, you can end up with a better value by buying something with a higher clock speed, less cores because of the way the licensing works on your SQL. I'll leave a link to the video. It ties in a lot of the topic. But before we get too far off topic, let's talk about this right here. Here. Now, these are some strong reasons not just to use XCPNG, but there are also strong reasons to use open source and have a better control over potential price hikes that you have no control over. Um, and these points are pretty well taken right here, at least to me. And I think this is something more and more large enterprises are really thinking about here. And no more vendor lock-in being right off the top. That is a big problem when you have a strong vendor relationship that also turns sour because the vendor goes, we're just increasing prices without increasing value. And yeah, it's just not, not necessarily a good thing. Easier to grow without license limitations. Now, this is something you have to predict when you're a, especially a startup. And this discussion that I had with some friends the other day was about, you know, how the Apache server became very popular during the dot-com you know, rush in the 90s was it was not advantageous for companies who had licensing and companies that were just starting out and trying to get everything online and put things on the web uh, to try to figure out license models around things. And this is where an open source model just kind of made sense going, wow, we can expand as needed. And the concept that people won't make money on this is obviously uh, just a myth that has been busted since the 90s and the 2000s and all the way into now that you can't make money with open source. The value place when you have an open source product becomes on the people. It becomes on a continued value of innovation and customization. This is still how the Vates team and them make money. We'll get to more on that in a second. The capability to improve the platform yourself 
or to pay people for it. Uh, good luck on doing that with VMware. Yeah, that's a really well taken point. And this is what happens. Uh, there are, of course, some people who grab some open source code and never contact the developers and will never hire them for anything. That's absolutely a thing that happens. But they weren't going to pay for anything anyways. And I you can't focus on, well, someone used it and didn't pay me. That's not a good way to look at it. If you keep innovating and you keep offering services and there are enough people, you know, I've done this on my channel many times. I go in depth explaining how to do something and yet people still hire me and they frequently hire me based on some of the videos where I actually told them how to do it, but they decided it would be better to hire the person that knows how to do it because, well, that's how actual business works. You outsource things. I mean, I could probably watch some videos on accounting, but I'm going to keep outsourcing my accounting because I did watch some videos on accounting. It's like, I understand the complexities of it this much and uh, the complexities grow and I would rather have someone that's a paid professional to do that. And this is still how this works there. People still pay for professional services services and support to the people over at the XCPNG or the Zen Orchestra team. And they hire them for things because they're like, well, I seen it. Um, I started in my lab and it worked really well, but I realized I don't want to manage some of these complexities. I'd like to be able to pay for support. And so they can do so. It's pretty simple. It's a nice model they have there. Um, more control on what's going on in the lower stack, unlike black box VMware. This is really important. It is People are always wanting to know what's going on, what are the things happening, and being able to, not saying everyone will audit the code, but being able to go through the code and modify it uh, for people who have an innovative idea, this actually allows that innovation to happen faster. When people want to build something on XCPNG, but they go, you know what, I'd like it to do this, or I'd like it to do that because I have a new business idea. It gives them a firm base to work on, and then they'll have their idea and then they often will contract someone like the original team that wrote it to enhance it and you know this goes right into the relationship xcpng is formed with a lot of very large hosting companies to build this into the infrastructure uh, if you follow their blog you'll see there's been developments with terraform there's been developments with lots of different cloud and init systems. And these are these large corporate scalable systems to make this easier to deploy. And they've announced partnerships uh, where there's strong relationship with them working with these hosting companies to make this deployed and easier to use. It's just, it makes logical sense for everyone involved. Avoid bad commercial practices from a quasi monopoly. Uh, this is something I think about a lot because the monoculture that persists throughout technology brings us things like the exchange problem we've seen recently. I don't understand so many people who have an absolute dedicated relationship, even if it's not the best solution to a certain product. And this happens a lot where this, you know, you create these kind of monopolies in there. And it's not good for the health of any large ecosystem because if everyone uses exactly the same software, so I'm not saying that XCPNG is a solution for everything and create a monoculture around it, but I think there's a lot of innovation when you look at alternatives. And this is something really important that people should always be thinking about of, you know, I know there's the old adages, no one ever got fired for using IBM and related where you could just insert that same phrase to a lot of other very popular commercial products. But some of those commercial products have let us down. They have not always been the best product to choose over time. So yeah, playing into some of the quasi monopolies can be kind of a pain. And this is a really important decision when you start talking about how to build your infrastructure because you become very reliant on there. Get rid of extremely complex licensing. Oh man. Um, this is something huge because it's not just the license. It's not like we're just trying to save money. We're just trying to get something for free. No, complex licensing is the enemy. Um, being the fact that Microsoft, and they're probably the biggest example of this, they just have convoluted licenses on some things occasionally that are uh, very you know, hard to sell in as the IT team. They're like, I trying to figure this license model out. You know, I, I love companies if there are licensing and it's a more simplistic approach to it that obviously makes it easier to sell, easier to scale. As an IT provider, as a managed service provider, uh, we deal with licensing issues all the time and stuff. And some of them get com complicated. Some of them are simple. I definitely praise the simple ones because I'd rather sell that product because it scales easier. It's easier to understand. But when there's all these little nuances to it, mm, that's kind of a pain. Now, wider hardware support. This is something that has obviously uh, become really a factor where you want to be able to support all the hardware and the hardware you have or the hardware that can be the best deal. This is something they've worked really hard at. And I'll go a step further that wasn't really talked about in there, but it's the storage hardware. That's a big 
piece of the pie because, well, when you start running a lot of VMs and hundreds or even thousands of them, now you're going, okay, where do I store all this? How do I build out my SAN? Well, vendor lock-in is another popular problem that you run into there if they only support a limited subset of it. They have done a lot of work and a lot of tooling in XCPNG, especially since I first started using it, to include multiple different common open source formats. This open source formats that they are using allow for a diversity of storage devices or even a mix and match of storage devices. Now, the last thing I'll kind of mention, because this is also where a lot of innovation has happened, is XCPG being a more complete product, in my opinion, because they offer a backup and disaster recovery solution built in with their Zen Orchestra. Now, Zen Orchestra is technically a separate product from X XCPNG. I know uh, the nuance is not lost on me for that. Someone's going to be pedantic and say exactly that, yes, they are two separate things. You're conflating them together, Tom. I look at them very much the same because if you run one, you pretty much manage it with the other. So the core project of XCPNG and then the separate VM that runs inside of it with Zen Orchestra. And Vates has alluded to a couple times, it's not available yet, but they're going to be kind of nesting the two together like a basic version for people that are, uh, don't want to run two separate products. That's future coming. That's not right now. Um, follow some blog posts on it. He's tweeted, but no, there's not a lot of uh, movement on that just yet. That's coming. I'm hoping this year. But seeing all that innovation, I thought I'd bring it up again that the real competitor that XCPNG is going up against is VMware. And the fact that they're open source gives them all these strong advantages and open source is wide adoption because it seems to pose a lesser business risk than it used to. Uh, this is a discussion that's you know coming up very frequently. And I talk to some large corporate companies about this. I have friends that work at large places. Uh, and this is something they think about because they've been really unhappy. Many of these companies you know, see the corporate opportunity and do things like just change licenses a little bit to increase revenue, but then don't provide great support, don't provide any innovation. They just repackage the same product at a higher price next year because that's their way of monetizing it more. And this is not something that necessarily is a good thing. And it can be kind of problematic when you're trying to do budget predictions over the next couple of years, uh, especially when innovation is key, because as the market changes, we're hoping a product innovates with it. And sometimes the innovation of product companies do is just, we're going to innovate our licensing because some company came out with new processors like AMD that are uh, many more cores and more availability. So uh, that would actually hurt our revenue model. So our innovation is new license model to do that. And that's essentially what happened in the VMware story. I'll leave a link to the level one video just because it's kind of a fun dive into that topic, how cores can affect licensing and performance and the way you budget for things at, at scale, especially when you talk about spending a half million dollars in SQL licensing. On topic is, of course, I'll leave links to what uh, I just discussed here with XCPNG and some of the other videos I have on the topic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or head over my forums for a more in-depth discussion. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store, where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.